Hi everyone. When times are inevitably tough in life, when things don't go according to plan, when you hit problems in life, be they problems with money, with relationships, with health, or whatever they might be, how do you react? Maybe you're having a good day, everything's bumbling along quite nicely, then all of a sudden you get a piece of bad news. Uh, a phone call, an email, and in the click of a finger, the day takes a bad turn. What do you do? How do you feel? And how do you respond when things go badly or life's tough? Well, over the last 18 months throughout the COVID pandemic, we've all, without exception, had to deal with pain. Whether that's the pain of losing loved ones, the pain of loneliness, the pain of illness, even the pain of changing routines and adapting to new ways of living. And the thing with COVID is that nobody has been exempt, whether you're a prince, the prime minister, a famous celebrity, COVID has not distinguished and many wealth or fame has made little or no difference to your circumstances. COVID even found people who had completely isolated themselves, followed the rules and hidden themselves away. And for many people, that uncertainty and lack of control and worry has caused severe anxiety that's contributed to the largest mental health crisis this country has ever seen. Some of the mentally strongest people I know have suffered poor mental health during COVID. Now today, as we continue our 40 days of restoration, we're gonna look at Psalm 31, which is a brilliant Psalm to look at when thinking about how we should respond to pain. Jesus even quoted this Psalm when he was dying on the cross, into your hands I commit my spirit. The Psalm's written by David, probably while he was fleeing from Saul. And this is, David, remember, who as a teenager defeated Goliath, the giant, in a one-on-one -on -one combat. David, who was a mighty warrior and a hero to many, but in this psalm is literally crying out in pain. And just as COVID has shown us, it doesn't matter how strong you might be or what position you might hold, everyone can still know hurt and pain. David, who, despite being a king, still knew what it was like to hurt and to cry out to the Lord. Now it's quite a long psalm, but for me verses 9 to 13 encompass quite well the body of David's complaint. So let me just read those verses to you and you'll hear what distress he's in. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbors and an object of dread to my closest friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten as though I were dead. I have become like broken pottery. For I hear many whisper in terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. David's not having a great day, is he? Um, notice in verse 9, he says, My body and soul grow weak with sorrow. So David is literally physically and emotionally exhausted. When life is tough, as it has been for many of us recently, and not just with COVID, but with all the other struggles we face in day-to-day -day life, how do we get restoration of our peace? Now, I know that for me, when I'm in difficult times, my natural reaction can sometimes be to try and take control of the situation myself, rather than turning to God in worship and prayer like David does here. I know other people who hide away or busy themselves, watch Netflix or one of um, a thousand other ways that 21st century Britain teaches us. But David shows us here that when we are in a difficult situation, when we need rescue, the answer is to come honestly and openly before God and tell him our worries. Reflecting on my own situation, I think that during COVID, I've become a little bit passive in my prayers and worship. When the church has been online, I've actually found it quite hard to sing along to worship songs. And so instead I would I would sit here with uh, and listen with a cup of coffee in one hand and my phone in another. Uh, I've also found prayer meetings on Zoom difficult with internet cutting in and out. 
but even without the events of COVID, we do, in any case, have that tendency to be very British when we pray and worship, so polite and conservative. We tell God what we want, what's wrong, and then we sign off. Thank you, Lord. Amen. David doesn't pray like that. His prayer for worship is a lament, almost howling out in pain, uh, telling God of his distress, his frustrations, his woes. And there is something about speaking out or crying out prayers, uh, at, at, crying them out loud, as uncomfortable as that might be to us, uh, speaking out or singing out our prayers is somehow more engaged, more involved. We're more likely to pray and worship how we actually feel rather than how we think God would like us to present our worries. God knows us. He knows what we want before we even ask. So we need to learn again how to pray in that honest way. But for me, the most important verse in this psalm is what he says next in verse 14. And it's because it's important because this is the bit that we often leave out we pray or worship we tell God our hurts our worries our concerns and we ask for his help and then we finish the prayer and wait for the answer but after telling God of his distresses you know for I hear many whisper in terror on every side they conspire against me and plot to take my life David says in verse 14 but I am trusting you O Lord you are my God isn't it brilliant when people tell you about a difficult time they're going through and how they're struggling, but they end it with, but you know what? We're trusting God. We're choosing to choose, we're choosing to trust God at this time. So if we can learn just one thing from this Psalm, can I encourage you, if you don't already, just add one line to your prayers or praise. Put this sentence from verse 14 in. I might have all these worries, but I am trust in you O Lord and what this does it changes your focus we acknowledge to God about how we feel our situations our worries but we also acknowledge that ultimately we can't control things we can't hide away we, we busy ourselves and watch Netflix it's just masking things but God is in control and we have to learn to trust him that he will ultimately take care of us even if there might not be a direct and immediate solution to our problem I mean, notice here in the psalm, David is writing from the standpoint that he hasn't yet been relieved of his afflictions. He's still in pain. He's still in distress. He's crying out to the Lord. I find that uh, very rarely does God solve one of my problems by changing my circumstances. But when we choose to trust God, that's when we gain the peace that passes understanding. That ability to have supernatural peace when there is no logical reason why we should do so. I know it's easier to say it than to mean it, but even if it's at the very end of your prayers, add this line, lay out honestly your needs to the Lord, talk to him, go ahead and complain to him. It's okay, he doesn't mind. David lays out his complaints to God, but end your prayer this way. But I trust in you, O Lord. Amen. <laughs>